Bold predictions are in. We've got four new ones tonight. This is our 23rd chapter of bold predictions. And this first one would probably just implode people's minds if it actually happened. It is possible, though. James from St. Cloud, Florida said, FSU will play Clemson three times this year. Obviously, this is a 9.75 on the boldness scale out of principle alone. However, it could happen. We haven't done a JP, Angels in the Outfield, lately. It could happen. How does it happen? Actually, it's pretty simple, especially in the ACC now because they don't have division play anymore, so they just take the two top teams. So part one is they play in week four. Let's say Clemson wins that one. Part two, they meet again in the ACC championship game. Let's say FSU wins that one. So they split, regular season conference title game. Uh, That is each other's only loss. And so part three is they go to the playoff, both of them, and they play in either the semifinal or the national title game. Stats and Info could not develop odds for me on this. I don't think there's a sports book out there that has odds on teams playing three times in a given year. They're also worried about this in the Big Ten. Ryan Day was talking about it last week at Big Ten Media Days. Harbaugh got asked about it. There's obviously the strong possibility that once you do away with divisions, anybody you play in conference play, you could play again. And so if you play, if the two best teams in your conference always play the last week of the regular season, well, you could have a, a rematch six days later. And um, that's not necessarily the case here because they play in week four. But how would the committee handle this? This is one of two reasons I have such a high boldness scale on this, boldness rating on this. Number one, it's just flat out hard for it to happen. Number two, both of them have to win all their other games. And then part three is, does the committee stick to their own criteria if this happens? I know they say they will. But if they've each played and won a game against each other, there are going to be several people who talk in microphones for a living and maybe some people in that committee room that say, well, they've, they've already had their shot. Whichever one has the second best resume. I guess whichever one doesn't win the conference title. Clemson in this scenario, oh, Clemson already had their shot. We can't run the risk of having a game played for the third time. Sounds like a playoff problem to me. Uh, But I digress. That's a 9.75. Next up, this one would blow some people's minds, too. I'm going to make this one a 9.25 on the old boldness scale. Alex from Columbus, Georgia, said Texas and Texas A&M will have a combined one loss entering November. I hear car tires screeching all over the place. What would this mean? I know not all of you have the schedules memorized. I don't either. That's why I got the helmet grid schedule in front of me. For Texas, before they enter November, they will have played at Bama, at Baylor. Uh, they've, they've got Oklahoma, obviously, in Dallas. So none of those games are in Austin. All three of their toughest games are away from home before November. Now, as for Texas A&M, this is treacherous. This is very tricky. And that's even if they have a much better team this year. They go to Miami in Week 2. They have got Auburn. They go against Arkansas in Dallas. They've got Bama at home. They go to Tennessee. And then they got South Carolina at home. So out of all those games, someone's going to lose one, and that's it. The other one's going to be undefeated, and then one of them's going to lose one game. This is a 9.5 on the boldness scale for me. Now here is the one ray of hope. Only two of those games I see as these teams being a definite underdog. Texas at Bama, they will definitely be an underdog. It looks like about seven to nine points right now. Uh, A&M against Bama at home, A&M will be an underdog. Won't be a huge one, but they'll be an underdog. A&M at Tennessee, I'm very interested because I think that that line could massively fluctuate between now and then. So there is not that one game on these schedules because I got got a ton of folks telling me Texas is going to beat Bama outright. Is anyone picking Bama in the game? Bama's a touchdown favorite. Is anyone even picking them? Interesting. We'll talk about that when the time comes. And Bama at A&M, all you'll be reminded about is how that game came down to the last play last year. Never mind Bryce Young didn't play. Came down to the last play last year. And remember what happened last time Bama went to College Station? And remember how tough Bama's had it on the road the last two years? All of these things are valid points, by the way. So just consider what you're saying here. 
You want chaos in a, in a good way? Have Texas and Texas A&M both in the playoff hunt when the first batch of rankings comes out. You're not ready. Some of you think you're ready, but I have been sent here to tell you, not our friend the alien, I have been sent here to tell you, you are not ready for a Texas is back world, especially if Texas A&M is also back in that same world. Whew. Trust me, you're not ready. Next up, let's go to the ACC. Clemson's the favorite here. FSU's like right there with them. But over the moon, I assume over is the first name, V is the middle name, and moon's the last name here uh, from Abington, Maryland. The prediction is North Carolina wins the ACC. Wins it. Doesn't play for it. Wins the ACC. This is a nine on the boldness scale for me, which is a little high considering they have the fourth best odds, I think, at the moment to win the conference. Here's my problem. I don't think they're going to be any good defensively. They haven't been, and I don't think they will be again this year. Getting there is one thing. Winning, like whoever you face in that game at that point will be able to play defense themselves to some degree. And so it's tough for me to envision a scenario like if Clemson's there. It's tough for me to envision a scenario where you get that game played in the 40s, which is probably what you'd need to win because, again, in that scenario, Garrett Riley was the good hire and we've got Kay Klubnick playing at a pretty good level and Clemson is scoring points. Or it's FSU there and ditto for all that and Jordan Travis. I don't, I don't think that North Carolina's winning this conference. Or I don't think it's likely, and therefore I'm making that a nine on the boldness scale. Now they do have Drake May. <laughs> Everybody in the country who has asked their opinion, including Bradley the associate earlier in the office, you ask him, hey, what do you think about North Carolina this year? Well, they got Drake May. Oh, cool. They got Josh Downs still. It, uh, the, the subpar defense they had last year lost several pieces. So, like, what have we really changed that inspires a ton of confidence in this team with me? It sounds like a really negative night for North Carolina. I don't mean it to sound this way. Look, if you want to predict them to win nine games, okay, but they're predicting them to win the conference. We have to be real here. Brandon Walker, who's no show in his own show these days, says, I'm never negative towards anyone. Well, how about this harsh dose of reality from North Carolina? They're not winning the conference this year. Next up, how about Georgia? Mr. Gibson from Huntsville, Alabama says, yeah, Georgia's just going to miss the college football playoff. Screeching tires part two. Uh, how does this happen? It's pretty straightforward in theory. And that is they lose one regular season game and then they lose in the SEC championship game. I would guess that's how that goes. Now, that's the easy part. The much more difficult part is picking where it happens. Uh, it is hard to win games. Kirby Smart talks about this all the time, and everyone has it go in one ear and out the other. They don't believe him because they think point spreads are gospel, preview magazines are gospel, recruiting rankings are gospel. We believe in all of those things. We also believe that these are 19-year-olds, and the human mind works in fascinating ways. And that's how, when you're playing Missouri last year, you trail by two possessions in the fourth quarter. That's not supposed to happen, and Georgia came back and won the game, but it did happen. Again, they came back and won the game. Georgia missing the playoff is a nine on the boldness scale for me. Missing it? They didn't say they're not going to win the title. They said missing it. Their over-under win total is 11 and a half. They got the best odds in the SEC. My guess, even though I kind of tried to build up Ole Miss earlier in the show, it was devil's advocate stuff. I still think the Tennessee game is probably the one they stand the, the best chance of losing. And if they lose that one... Uh, hey, look, my guess is they still go to Atlanta. Uh, that's just a guess. If they don't, ironically, for them to miss out on the playoff, I get, you know what, scratch that. I was going to say something, but I'd have to see the rest of the country. They could lose to Tennessee and lose to Bama or lose to LSU or whoever's in Atlanta. Yeah, that could happen. It's, it's not crazy. I mean, I know we build up these preseason favorites. Normally it's Bama people do it with. Now it's Georgia. And you just can't ever envision them losing. And then it happens. And then you remember, oh, that's right. What did I suffer from amnesia or something? I've learned this lesson a thousand times before. This was just a thousand one. Now I know what's going to happen. I'm going home next weekend and I will be told that I am trying to overcompensate and trying to offer the negative slant, the glass half empty slant or the chalice half empty slant towards Georgia. I know what awaits me down there. But everybody else, everybody else is coronating you. I have to... I have to be the sandbag to the hot air balloon. 
So be it. It's still a nine. I still think they're going to make the playoff.